Hey guys, Jaden Irwin here with Little Sticks. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. This is part five of the Dino Crash Course. So if you haven't caught up yet, you might wanna go through those last couple parts that we've been through. This is gonna pick up directly where we left off on the last one, where we had a REST API made with Oak. Well, um, we would kind of wanna take that a step further, I think, and connect it to a real database. In this case, we're gonna be using Firebase. And the main reason we're using Firebase and Firebase um, Firestore is because I haven't seen a lot of people using the two together, Dino and Firebase. So I figured it'd be a good uh, use case for people to kind of learn how the two could talk to each other. Um, there's a lot of examples out there of how to connect it to like Prisma, um, I think Planet Scale. There's some a lot of demos out there with Dino, um, but I didn't see too many with Firebase. So I think we'll just go ahead and tackle that and take our API that we've already written with our little fake database of people, this people array in here, and let's do something real with it. So it's actually working with a full-fledged you know, database. Um, to get started, it's really simple. You just go to console.firebase.google.com. I know it's kind of a mouthful there, but um, yeah, console.firebase.google.com. Go ahead and make an account if you don't already have an account and then create a new project and just kind of go through the prompts of creating a new project. And when that's done, you should be looking at a screen that looks like this. Um, I just called mine Star Wars Dino. You can call it whatever you want. Um, and from there, we're gonna be setting up a web application. So I'm just gonna say Star Wars API. And again, you can use your own data, your own data set that you want. Uh, if you don't want to do Star Wars, by all means, you don't have to. Um, we're just going to say Star Wars API. We're not going to do Firebase hosting on this app, um, mainly because in the future, we maybe will deploy it to Dino Deploy, so you can kind of see what a live environment of this app looks like. Um, from here, it's going to go through some prompts of NPM and all of that. And really all we're gonna need from this is this const Firebase config equals and then the object for it. So let's just go ahead and copy that. I am going to go ahead and save it over here on my other screen real quick. And then we'll say continue to console. Okay, so now we have one app up here. It is a web app, that's what we want. And to connect this to Firebase, it's actually pretty simple. Um, what we're gonna do first is install a couple of dependencies here. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy them over. Um, the source code will be linked below too, so you can just go to the source code and copy these imports if you want. Um, but it's just import initialize app from gstatic.com forward slash Firebase JS, and then it's got the version number there. So we are gonna be using the latest version of Firebase. I think there are some examples out there where people are using 8.0. Um, I figured out a way to get this to work with, you know, the latest version, so we might as well use it. Um, the next one's gonna be import git firestore from gstatic, firebase.js, same thing, and then that's firebase-firestore.js. So those two imports there is what we need. And then we're gonna take our const firebase config that we literally just copied. We're gonna paste that in. And this is actually public information, like this is okay to be live because um, we're not going to do it in this course, but you can set up Firebase Firestore rules, so specific rules of how someone can access your Firebase database. Um, feel free to do some research on that if you'd like. And then from here, we're just going to do a const Firebase app equals initialize app, and then we are passing in the Firebase config. And we could call this, you know, Star Wars API, something like that. But yeah, just initialize app, and then you're passing in the Firebase config that we copied and pasted. And then the next piece is gonna be, and I won't copy this one, this one's easier. So const db equals get Firestore. And then that is gonna be passed in Firebase app. There you go. So that's really all you need to kind of connect it to Firebase. From here, we can start testing that connection. So. The first thing we're gonna do is actually start getting some data into our Firebase Firestore. So let's go ahead and delete this mock data that we have in here. We don't need that anymore. We're gonna go back to Firebase, we're gonna to go to build, and then let's set up a Firestore database. So we're gonna create database. 
it might take a second depending on internet connection and all of that and I'm gonna say start in test mode you don't want to use test mode um, in live production obviously but um, just for testing purposes we're gonna use test mode and I'm gonna click the uh, United States Firestore location but feel free to select whichever location is closest to you and, and where your users will be if you're kind of using this to build a real application. Um, and then when that's done, there you go, we've got a Cloud Firestore set up. There are no collections yet. Um, there will be a people collection when we start adding people to it. So let's go ahead and kind of work backwards. I know that's kind of weird, but if you look at this, um, the easiest way to get data into our Firestore would be to use the post request that we already have set up. So um, I do have a people.json file also in the source code linked below that will be um, available to you. So you can just kind of use some mock data that I created from what we had previously. It is actually JSON, valid JSON now too, which is good. So we're just gonna jump in right here to this if statement. And the first thing we're gonna do is add a doc. So we're gonna add doc, and it should be await add doc. This is already asynchronous, so that's gonna work. And if person await add doc, and then we're gonna pass in the collection. And then the collection needs to know, okay, what database of what collection, right? So collection, and then that's gonna be database, comma, the collection is going to be called people, so the people collection of our database. And then we are going to pass in the person. This is add doc. It needs the collection that it's adding the person to. And then that should just work. And then what we're going to do is actually respond a little bit differently. We're going to do person added to Firebase, something like that. Maybe we do a little fire emoji. Cool. So let's go ahead and save that. We're going to get this running. Um, you could do the same command that we did in the last one. You probably already have it in your terminal if you're kind of going back to back on this. So dino run dash a, so all permissions, watch, and then the API main.js file. Um, we could run it like that, and it, it would be running on localhost 8000, right? So hello from our API, and then we can do the git and all of that. Um, but what I actually want to show you guys is how to clean this up a little bit. So let's do a new file called dino.json. And then we're going to do tasks. That's going to be an object. And then the task is going to be called, um, let's just call this API for now. And then this API task is going to be the same exact command that you have been running from the base. So now what's cool about this dino.json file is dino can pick it up. So we'll do dino task API. There you go. So it's it ran that command that we saved in a dino.json file. Um, this is very similar to if you're used to NPM, NPM scripts. This is basically the same way to do NPM scripts with dino. So instead of me having to you know rewrite dino run dash a dash dash watch, um, I can really just run this Dino task API or whatever you want to call it, and it will run it um, automatically. So now it's running. If we go here, hello from our API. It is watching for changes on these files. Um, let's go ahead and test it out. So we're going to go back to Thunder Client. We're going to go to our post request. And I've got a little bit of this mock data of Leia Organa. Let's go ahead and post to people. So this is, should be mostly left over from your last um, video, the last part that we did. Uh-oh, we got a 404. Okay, add doc is not defined. So let's go back to our main.js. And that's just going to be adding to our imports here. So this is coming from the Firestore import. Collection, get, start, get Firestore, add doc. Um, looks like collections duplicate. So now let's try this again. Cool, let me hide the terminal, see if we can make some room. It looks like it was a 200, sweet. So person added a Firebase, and if we go back to Firebase, maybe we have to refresh. Sweet, we have a people collection, we've got a doc, and then we have Homeworld, Alderaan, 
ID to, so everything we passed up is there. Um, you might be wondering, okay, so what's this ID? Well, this is actually an ID that Firebase automatically generates when you use the add doc command. So maybe we wanna use the slug as the ID. That is also possible with Firebase, pretty easy to do actually. So that's gonna be a set doc. So we're gonna do set doc on our imports. We're gonna go down here and instead of doing add doc, let's just go ahead and comment that. We're gonna do await set doc. And then this is gonna be doc, so it takes in the document that you are setting. And then that's gonna be db, comma, people, collection, right? And then that's where the next argument is gonna be the slug. And that's because it wants to know, okay, so you're setting this document, but what is, what's the ID, what's the key for that document? So in this case, it's gonna be the slug. And then the data, which is gonna be person. So wait, set doc, and then it takes in the document, db people slug is our key, and then the person. So that looks great. Um, we can actually get rid of this ID being passed in now too, because we don't really need it. And then we do have a profile URL field that I forgot to add on there too. And this is just, you know, because of the the data that we're working with, we have a profile URL. You could rename those things, whatever you want, um, and pass all of that in. But there we go, so const person slug name homeworld and profile URL. There is an ID on all of those, but we are kind of gonna ignore it because really um, we're gonna use the slug as the ID. So, and you you could you know stick to this ad doc if you like that idea of Firebase automatically setting an ID for you, that's very unique. Um, totally up to you how you wanna approach that for your Firebase setup. Um, but I'm gonna stick with the slug as my key. So let's go ahead and try this. It's still running. We're just gonna go ahead and um, we might as well just do another layer. We're just gonna go ahead and send that up. Person added to Firebase. And we'll go back here. And there we go, Leia Organa, slug, home world, name, profile URL, and the slug. So that looks great. Um, slug is actually kind of a duplicate field. You could kind of get rid of that if you wanted to. Um, from the person that's being passed up, you still need to take in the slug if you're gonna pass it up as the key though. So keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, that's the post. Now let's just kind of keep working backwards. We have our get people and then a specific person from the URL. Um, this one's a little bit more involved, not too bad though. We are gonna get rid of, we'll just go ahead and comment it. This const person people find from people or find person from people um, mainly because we're swapping it with Firebase, right? So let's stick with this const slug equals ctx.params. But now we're gonna do a try and what I added there is just an async because this is gonna be an async function. And then we have a try catch that we're gonna throw all of this into. Just to be careful. I'm gonna pass a catch in here, console.log error. And then we'll just do actx.response.body equals something went wrong, sad face, okay. So const slug and um, this if person, um, ctx.response.body, um, we're still probably gonna need that here, but the first thing we wanna do is go and get this specific person that's being passed in, and um, we're going to check our Firebase for that person. So in our case, we're gonna look for Leia because we do know Leia is inside of the Firebase Firestore. So with this one, it's gonna be const people ref equals collection. So we already have collection imported, db, and then it's gonna ask for the collection. So the database and then the people collection of that database. And then the next one's gonna be const q. So this just stands for query equals query that's a method and then it's going to be people ref that we're, is going to get passed in and then where and i'm not going to go too far in depth on this because this is more you know firebase stuff but um, this is essentially a query for firebase and what that looks like so query people ref 
gets passed in where slug, that slug field um, equals comma slug. So the slug that gets passed into the params. Okay, and then const person equals await get doc. And this is actually get docs. Um, and then we're passing the query. So get all the documents with this query that's getting passed in. And then let's just do a dot then. There's a couple of ways that you could do this. We're just going to do a dot then query snapshot. There's probably a actually more efficient way to do this, but we're going to do a wait get docs and then dot then query snapshot. Okay. And then the query snapshot is going to have some data in it. So const data equals query snapshot dot docs dot map. So the query snapshot is going to return a bunch of information. We're just going to get the documents from that query snapshot. And then we are going to map over all of those documents doc dot data. So const data equals query snapshot docs dot data. And then we are going to return data. And it's the first one that pops up. Um, there's a lot of, you know, complexity that could come up into this with the Firebase setup. But this is one of the quickest ways to do it. So we would be querying the people ref where slug equals whatever the slug is that gets passed in. And then we are getting all of the documents that Firebase returns from that query. And we're returning the first document in that docs array. So the first person that matches that slug in this case. So if person ctx.response.body equals person. So let's go ahead and test this out. We're going to go back to Thunder Client. We're going to go to our get. And then we are going to go to localhost slash people slash Leia. See if I can remember how to spell it. Organa. Cool. So we've got a status 200, homeworld, Alderaan, ID, slug. So that looks great. It is returning the first person that matches that slug that gets passed in. And we could test this out. Let's go ahead and get a couple of people in here, maybe really quick. We're going to go back to our post. Let's go ahead and send Luke up to Firebase. And we are going to send Han Solo up to Firebase. You can kind of see how quickly you could do this. Um, maybe a little code challenge for you guys would be to, to see how you could take in an array of people and add each of those people that are coming up to Firebase. That would be kind of a little code challenge for you guys. OK, so now we should have Han Solo. Let's go ahead and try that out now on dash solo um, people Han Solo was not found. So it says Han Solo was added. Ah, I see. So remember, I took the slug out of what we were sending up and we are querying based on the slug. So that was bad on my part. Um, that's okay. We can go to our just to kind of clean this up real quick, let's just go ahead and add a slug field to Han Solo real quick. So you can kind of see what that would look like in directly inside of Firestore. Han dash solo. What you could do um, in that case, if this query where slug equals slug, you could actually do a different type of query where you're querying for a document that has a key of Han dash solo and Leia dash Organa. Um, in our case, we're doing a query looking for a subfield of the document. Um, so yeah, just different approaches for that type of thing. Okay, let's go back. We'll try this again real quick. Han solo. Cool. So now that there's a slug field on that Han solo document, it is returning Han solo. So there we go. And maybe just to be safe, let's add slug back in to what we're passing up. OK, cool. So the last one we have is getting all people that it has in the people collection. 
And this one is probably the simplest, to be honest. We're going to do an async. All of these are async because we're awaiting Firebase, right? Um, now let's go. Uh, sorry, I thought I saw an error in there, but that's from earlier. So we're going to get all people. So let's do a try catch again. Pass the error down. Console.log error. And then ctx.response.body equals. Uh, something went wrong. Okay, let's go back up to this try. And we're going to do const people equals await get docs. And then it's going to be collection database. Oops, collection. And then database. Oops, db comma, and then the people collection again. And what it is, is it saying, ha, huh. await get docs, okay. Const data equals people dot docs. So this is all of the docs. And you know what we could do, just so you can kind of see what directly gets sent down with this get docs before we do the next step. Let's just go ahead and respond with that. So ctx.response dot body equals, let's just do data for now, or I guess people. So we'll save that. Let's go ahead and do a get request just on the people slug or people endpoint. 404 not found dot body. There we go. Cool. So just by default, when we do get docs, Firestore sends down all of all of this information about the config, about the database and where it's being sent from. Um, it sends over some settings as well, SSL true. So it's got all of this metadata on it. And we don't really want to send all of that back to someone that's just looking for people, right? So what we would do in that case is do a const data equals um, and this is going to be people.docs. And actually, if we go back here real quick, keep scrolling, you'll see there is a docs. So snapshot, keep going, we should see right here. So docs is where it's actually sending down the information that we want. So we're going to go through the docs and we're going to get all of the information. So like, see, there's Hound Solo. So we're going to go through the docs and we are going to map through each doc. And it's going to be doc.data. And then now let's just return that data from the request. So localhost 8000 and then people. There we go. 200. And then we've got Leia. We've got Han Solo. We've got Leia again. We did do Leia twice on our post request. So there we go. We've got all of the people right there. So that is really it um, on this one. This is connecting the Firebase uh, database to our setup that we had previously. So the next step is going to be um, creating a front end that kind of consumes this. And believe it or not, we are going to write that front end with Dino as well. So it's Dino all the way down from beginning to end. There's no node at all in this course. <laughs> um, so yeah, stay tuned for that next piece. And I appreciate you guys following along. Hopefully this has been helpful, kind of answering those questions of how do I use Dino? How do I use it in like a real scenario like this, where I'm trying to connect it to Firebase, to a database and use it. So yeah, I appreciate you guys. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment below, leave those thumbs ups and subscribe if, if you want to follow along. So yeah, have a good one. Peace. Thank you.